So, now um, you've, let's imagine you've uh, visualized all your data, you've checked that you're doing the right thing, you've done your statistics, you've actually found that uh, the thing you're after was either significant or if you've been doing your Bayesian statistics, you've got your nice odds ratio and you think, wow, I've done it, you've got your p-value, you've got whatever you need and you can publish your paper. The question is, what have you actually shown? Have you really shown the thing that you think you're showing? Um, the statistics are about something that you've measured, but is that thing you measure actually about the phenomenon you're really interested in? Um, first of all, you need to think about the conditions. Maybe there's other explanations for the answers you're seeing. Uh, Psychologists get very good at this, actually trying to work out the, the different alternatives, what's going on in, in people's heads. That's particularly because you can't actually tell what's going on in someone's heads, you're always guessing. But this is equally true if it's something that's more behavioural that you're observing. Um, it's, there might be other reasons the one that you've thought of. Uh, you might think that something is due to uh, something being easier to learn, but it might be uh, more some other feature of your system that you've put in that is important but isn't the thing that you you thought you were testing um sometimes you might get good statistics out but what they're doing is saying you have a very reliable amount of knowledge of your sample so we've talked in uh, other parts about choosing very small groups of people uh, with a well small in terms of the kinds of people they are maybe a big sample but with a very narrow kind of user um, either that happens accidentally because you end up with a lot of psychology students or um, computer science students as your subjects, or it might happen because you've deliberately chosen to do that in order to make it very easier to see an effect. Um, so what you might do is get very good stats about those, but what they've done is told you about that group of people. They haven't told you about everybody. Um, so, you know, but also you might have seen the example of... Um, a PhD, in fact, where somebody had uh, done small groups of people uh, in an environment which was difficult to study, so you couldn't do large numbers of them. So there were groups of people, but lots and lots of measurements for each one. Did lots of statistics on it, um, got significant results. But what the significant result was saying was that the the variability between people was being cancelled out. But it all all it did was tell you that the three or four groups that they'd studied, you knew a lot about those. You had to use something else, you had to think, uh, use your head in order to actually work out whether you then believe that might be true for other kinds of groups of people. Um, another problem you can have is you will, if you're interested in a property, so for instance, uh, the consi uh, consistency of systems, are consistent systems better than inconsistent systems? So you create one system that's consistent, one that's inconsistent, and you compare them, and sure enough, the consistent one comes out better. But is that about consistency or did you just do a better job of designing the second system? So you can see an example of this um, uh, in this little story here. So this is a real story. It was an ACM conference, a large ACM conference. And what I'd say is, in a way, a good empirical paper. They uh, did their experiments well. They did their statistics well. Um, they thought about a lot of stuff. Um, the issue they're looking at was collaborative support for a particular task. We'll call it X. I'm not going to tell you the actual paper. The, um, uh, you might be able to find if you look hard enough, but I'm not going to tell you too much. Um, and they had three pieces of software. Piece software A was domain-specific software, and it was synchronous for the task. They're all for this same task X. Software B was generic software. So it was off-the-shelf software, and it was synchronous. And... System C was also off-the-shelf generic software, and it was asynchronous. So they tried all of those three systems with quite, I can't remember how many uh, users they had in each, but reasonable number of users to be able to get uh, results. And they got their statistically significant results out of it. So this is, if you look at it, these one of your classic two by two diagrams. You've got synchronous versus asynchronous. You've got domain specific, so software design, particularly of task X versus generic software. Um, Software A was synchronous and domain specific. Piece of software B was generic and synchronous. And software C was asynchronous and generic. So they tested those out and um, they did sensible measures of quality. They were quite reasonable measures. Reasonable numbers of subjects, as I said, got their significant results. And I can't remember the exact number, but they were 
pretty significant. I think they were quite a lot better than your sort of minimum 5%. And they showed that domain-specific software was better than generic software and that asynchronous software was better than synchronous software. And the conclusion they came to was what they really wanted was asynchronous domain-specific software. Sounds good. Nice paper. But maybe there's something else going on here. So oh, I forgot to show you the graphs, but uh, yeah, so you drew the graphs. Domain specific was better than generic. Asynchronous was better than synchronous. Sounds good. So lots of graphs, lots of stats, lots of numbers. Yay. Um, oh, and that's what they wanted up there. So what's wrong with this? It sounds pretty good. You know, that they're, they're, they've done their tests. They've got everything there. The question is, there's a couple of questions here. First is interaction effects. So they had actually had software in three of those places and effectively they had compared the two kinds of synchronous and the two kinds of generic and worked out that on the left hand side, on the, the synchronous ones, that domain specific was better on the bottom, that asynchronous was better for generic and therefore that the, the top right was the place they wanted. Um, it certainly says it's an interesting place to study. So as an explorative piece of work, this is great. It's showing clearly there's good, some good sort of gut feeling that this is a good place to go. However, it's not necessarily the case that just because one that synchronous is better than uh, asynchronous for generic software and that domain specific is better than generic for synchronous ones, that you put the two together, they'll also be better. Sometimes you get negative effects when things and things interfere. So, but it's certainly that's fine. It's saying it's a good place to look. That's what, that's reasonable. But there is a more important point. If you blinked at the wrong moment and the way the paper was written, I don't think deliberately, it's just the way people write papers, gave this impression. It looked like they were talking about the properties. They talk about synchronous and asynchronous, generic and domain specific. And I've sort of presented it that way because the paper was written that way. But these are not independent variables. There were three pieces of software. And it's a bit like having an experiment on three people. Uh, you'd obviously realise that something was a bit weird. So you've got three people. One of them's tall and um, and uh, fair-haired. One of them's short and fair-haired. And one of them's short and dark. Um, and from that, you want to infer, infer something about tall, dark people. Now, if you had hundreds in, in, of, in each category, you might feel you're, you're looking at finding something generic. But if you literally had three people, you might feel it was a bit shaky or foundations. There are three pieces of software here. Um, just imagine that the system B they tried, um, which was, I think, an off-the-shelf bit of software, just happened to be a pretty poor piece of off-the-shelf software. So... B, so for piece, piece of software B, was less good than piece of, soft, piece of software A. That was what they based their uh, inference that generic software was less good than domain-specific software. Again, because B is rubbish software, it was less good than their synchronous generic software that they tried. And therefore they, um, they or their asynchronous that they tried. So therefore they inferred that synchronous so, um, software was better than asynchronous software. But actually, all they discovered is system B is bad. Now I said it might be bad because of the reasons they're looking for, but it might be bad for all sorts of other reasons. Um, now you might be able to unpack that by uh, looking at sort of qualitative studies, look at the video, um, perhaps the things that people report as to why they found one better than the other. So you might be able to sort of pull out from this understanding to be able to actually say, is this the property, is not the system? But they didn't do that because they didn't notice. Um, so what went wrong here? Partly this is about that the, the methods that you, they were using, which were controlled experiments, you know, and it was fine to use the controlled experiments, but the assumptions they made embodied in those methods uh, were not necessarily ones that held their system. So in a psychology uh, case, when you're doing this, you try to control everything as tightly as possible and to make the changes you make as, as, as small and as um, in incremental as you can. Um, but in piece of software, if you change something like from synchronous to asynchronous, you change lots of stuff about the design. You can't just simply flip a switch. You have to change a whole load of things. Um, so in psychology, you have a single simple cause and a controlled environment. Uh, in interaction, even in a laboratory setting, 
um, you can't control things to that extent. It's much more open in terms of the kind that the the design of the software, and there are usually multiple causes for the same possible outcome. Um, so you can't just take the method and expect it to work. So you can do the stats, you can do the experiment, but when you actually look at it at the end, you've got to actually ask different questions. Um, so what do you do about that? One approach would be to um, have find lots and lots and lots of types of software of each in each category. It's probably not going to happen. I mean, in terms of practicality. So what you actually do here is you have to understand the assumptions and modify your behaviour. So, so given you know that there are multiple uh, causes, that's when you do your, as, said, as we described a moment ago, do your video analysis, do your detailed qualitative analysis in order to be able to say not just that, that this happened, but, um, but why and whether it actually corresponds to the thing that you were interested in in the first place.